Now then, people. Uh, my name's Andy Young, and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this particular video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild motorcycle front forks. So this is one of the forks off Ben's 1988 Yamaha TDR 250. And these are a pretty basic fork to strip down and replace. Uh, but it's not just a seal replacement. Yes, one of the seals was leaking, and normally you'd do both forks, and I would be doing both forks, but just one to camera. Um, but also, on this particular video, I'm also going to change some of the bushes. Now, obviously, with that fork sliding up and down, we've got bushes that go between the two components. And this bike's like 20 odd years old, 1988, 2016, it's pretty old, isn't it? Um, and those bushes do wear. And when you get wear on the bushes, of course, we get movement on the fork. And I'll put it in the vise and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Um, and if that stanchion, if the chrome tube here, is moving around too much in respect to the lower part of the fork, the fork leg, then of course the rubber seal can't keep in contact and we're going to leak some oil. So you need to check for that if you're going to rebuild your own forks because if there is movement you need to change the bushes as well. Changing just the seals isn't going to fix the problem. It might fix it for a very short period of time and then you can guarantee those seals are going to start to leak again. So what we've ordered, or Ben's ordered because he's pretty good at that kind of stuff, is he's ordered for both forks some genuine Yamaha um, bushes for the top. They're in those little bags there, look. And of course, all the way from England, from Yambits, he's ordered a couple of uh, fork seals. That's the main hydraulic seals. And, like the good lad he is, he's also ordered the two retaining clips. Now, obviously we have got the old ones, but they're, again, they're very, very old, and they tend to lose the springiness. They get pretty corroded. And hey, they're really cheap, so just buy new ones. Don't be so tight. And one thing he didn't order, it's a bit of a shame, and maybe you should, is he didn't order new dust seals. Now, the dust seals are the bits that you get to see. You know, when you just look at the fork on the bike, you can see the dust seals. Now, okay, on TDR 250s, they have a, a gator as well. Um, so you can't actually see these until you take the gator off. But they have a dust seal, and then underneath they have the hydraulic seal. And on this particular dust seal, you'll see there, look, it's got a bit of corrosion, you know, it's started to rust and, and to flare up. And they're actually not in very good nick. And, and really, yeah, really you should have bought new ones. Damn. But, you know, they are easily changed at a later date. And to change the dust seals, you don't need to strip the forks down. Big bonus. So maybe you'll order some and pop them in at a later date. Okay. One last thing that you will need is the workshop manual. Now, I have that. Um, Ian, my friend at uh, Yamaha, was extremely brilliant at sourcing that manual. Very difficult to get hold of, and uh, he managed to get it for me. And it's the proper Yamaha one. So as I work my way through the video, any specific um, quantities or talks or anything like that, I'll put up on the screen so you can treat this a little bit like a workshop manual video kind of thing, I suppose. And that's what I'm aiming to do with this particular channel. And as, as I do more and more videos, hopefully I get a little bit better at doing it for you. Okay, so we need to make a start. We need to get this fork stripped down into its various components, give everything a clean, a bit of an inspection, and then we can do a rebuild and we're going to replace the seals, we're going to replace the bushes, uh, the top bush at least, uh, because we can't get the bottom bush anymore and we're going to obviously put new oil in and I'll show you how to, to put the correct amount of oil of the hydraulic fluid into the fork and of course what weight of oil and it's critical that you put in exactly the right amount because if you if you put in too much then it can cause some serious problems uh, with the handling under heavy braking and, and if you hit a bump and stuff on the road and uh, if you put in too little then well you know it's not going to work very well as a shock absorber is it okay here we go. Okay, don't forget, these forks are full of hydraulic oil. So you're going to need something to catch all that dribbly oil. And actually doing forks is a really messy job. So if you've got anything around that you don't want oil on, move it now. Okay, so I'll pop that down the floor. There we go. That's going to catch hopefully all the drips. And obviously we have the fork. 
Now the first job, before we undo the top and, well realistically, before you pull this out of the bike, you should crack that bolt or that nut off just to loosen it, because while it's bolted in the triple clamps, it, it doesn't move, so you can undo it, you know, it's no brainer. Once you've got it out of the bike, very, very difficult to undo those. Um, and down there, underneath, is on this particular fork, is an 8mm cap head screw. And that's the key to the whole operation. We need to undo that screw, that bolt, down there, and that's going to release uh, the internals of the fork so we can actually separate the two pieces. And that's what we need to do to get to these seals. So I'll mount this in the vise and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now unfortunately this particular fork doesn't have the caliper mount, so I can't just grab one of the caliper mounts in the vise. I'm going to have to clamp it along here, and I really, really don't want to mark it. Ben doesn't want me to mark it either, otherwise serious problems. Okay, I could always clamp it around there, I suppose, and it looks to me like somebody already has. Yeah, there's vice marks already on there. Okay, there you go. Let's do that. So the first job is going to be to just, just loosen off that bolt. Now we may be able to do it just with a ratchet. If not, I use a rattle gun. Rattle guns are really good for this kind of stuff. So, 8mm modified Allen key, that goes down the hole into the bolt and hopefully now that's turning inside. Okay, time for the rattle gun. Now remember there's a heap of oil in here so uh, as soon as we take that bowl completely out it's going to drain oil out. <coughs> okay, that was it. That's just how easy it is. Okay, let's just stick that up here so you can see what's going on. grubby in there so it's taking a while to get it out. There we go. Right. There should be a ceiling washer in there. Now one of these forks was leaking oil so this might be the one that's got very little in it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so whilst that's draining, I'm going to whiz that off. Now, I deliberately didn't undo this in the bike. I wanted to show you just how hard it is if you don't undo it in the vise. Now, when you're clamping forks in the vise, the critical zone is the part of the chrome tube, the stanchion, which goes through the seal. So that part there, that travel is critical. So clamping it up here isn't as bad. If you damage the chrome up here, it's not the end of the world. If you damage the chrome down here and leave a mark, you've killed it, basically, because all it'll do is continue to rip seals all the time. So be very, very careful. And that's why I'm going to clamp it up top. Now, now is a really good time to go for a coffee, or a tea, or an alcoholic beverage if you prefer, um, because we're leaving the, the fork to drain. We don't want to work on it while it's still full of oil. But I've got to buzz that off. And these are pretty tight. And it's probably unlikely. Oh, look at that. Maybe I did crack it off from the bike. Yeah, I think I did. It's been a while. I've been waiting for the parts for a few weeks. Now, 
Inside there, we've got, hmm, looks like paste, which shouldn't be in there. Um, I think there's something broken in this fork, but we'll see. Okay, so that. And then we've got a washer. And I'll put you an exploded diagram on the video so you can see all the various parts and you'll see what, the, what, the, what they're all called. Oh, Benjamin, what have you done? I'll give you a proper clean later on. Now, spring. Notice with the fork spring, the tight coils are at the top. So when you put it back in, they must be at the top. Right, we'll leave that to drain. Okay, so the next job now, we remove the bolt at the bottom. It's still dripping oil, which is excellent fun. And they'll do that forever, basically. Uh, we need to clamp it in the vise, and we need to remove a circlip from the top here. So I wonder if I can use that lug there to clamp it in the vise. Yeah, there we go, look. That'll work. And it'll drip into the thingy. Okay, so at the top here, this is the dust seal we can see. I'm going to remove a circlip. Before I do that, I'm going to bring the camera a lot closer for you. Okay, so without stepping on the oil tray down the bottom, we've got a little circlip to remove, and that's this one here. They're pretty easy to get out, shouldn't take a lot of hassle. And we're going to be replacing this when we come, come to do the rebuild. There we go, so that's the old one out. And then underneath that is this dust seal. Okay. Now, we're not replacing the dust seal because Ben didn't order any. Which is most unlike Ben, he usually orders pretty much everything that we possibly could need. So they may be not available anymore for this particular TDR250. So what we can do now, now that we've removed that circlip, we can separate these two components. And as they come apart, it's going to bring out the dust seal, the hydraulic seal, and most likely the top bush. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now, once we've pulled off that clip, we can remove the internals, which is the piston, basically. And it should be, there we go, a spring. So we're going to remove those two components out of the inside of the fork. Yes, they are filthy, and yes, they're going to need a really good clean. So we'll stick those over there. Deal with that shortly. And now, basically, other than lots more oil, there's nothing inside the fork. So we're going to stick that in the vise, and I'm going to show you how to separate the two parts and bring out the seal at the same time. Okay, so we've still got the dust seal, the main seal, and the bush all inside the lower fork leg. And to remove them, all we have to do is pull out the stanchion, as far as it will go, and then use it a bit like a slide hammer. There we go. So there we go, it's out, and we've got the dust seal, the main hydraulic seal, which is a, in a very bad state, a washer, and the top bush. And that there's the bottom bush. We can't replace that, unfortunately, we can't get those anymore, but we have got new ones of the top ones, so we're going to replace those. Right, so we'll slide all of those off. There we go, slide that off. Cool, and that's the order they go in. Dust seal, main seal, washer, and then furthest down is the actual bush itself. Great, more cleaning to do. Now, it's, uh, it's really important that now that you've got everything stripped down, you've got to give it A, a really good clean, and B, inspect it because you've probably taken the forks apart because they've been leaking oil and the primary failure might not be the seal man this one's filthy good job Ben, it's all like crap okay um, when you're handling the stanchion this is a really important part of the fork and we need to preserve um, the smoothness of the chrome, we don't want to damage it, put any dents in it, that kind of stuff so do treat it with care um, I've just given it a squirt down the inside of some brake cleaner and that's flushed out pretty much all the old um, oil that was in there. 
which was heavily contaminated to be honest. Uh, it was very grey, full of bits of metal and stuff. Uh, not good at all. So now that that's clean, I'm going to put it somewhere really safe so it's not going to get damaged. Now we've got the fork leg, that's pretty grimy as well, so we'll give that a bit of a spray with the brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is actually really good for this kind of stuff. And you don't need too much to be honest. There we go. Excellent. Now, Mr. Torchy. Okay, and obviously use a torch just to have a look inside and make sure you've got it nice and clean. Got one more spray to do, a bit more down that bottom left hand corner. There we go. Excellent. That'll do. Cool. Right, bit of a clean around the top. Making sure you've got all the debris out of there. Make sure that the circlet groove is clean as well because you're going to... See, look at all that crap in there, look. That's bad. It's really bad. The other fork was quite clean. Okay. Wow. Great job. Right, we'll just leave that to drain over there. Right, some more bits. Okay, so we've got the piston, and that's sort of the uh, the, the bump stop kind of a bit on there, so we'll put that over there, don't forget it, and we'll give this a clean. And if you don't bother to clean them off, then of course your new oil is going to get contaminated straight away, so, you know, you need to, this is the kind of stuff that you need to do. And if you've got a degreasing bath, you know, chuck them in there, we'll give them a good wash out. That saves a lot of a lot of messing around. Okay. There we go. Right, Mr. Piston's clean. Let's get that over there. Give Mr. Spring a clean. Little spring. Get all the crap off that. Great stuff. Back on there. I don't think that one matters which way up, and up it goes, so we'll just stick that back on the piston, ready for reinstallation. Okay, well, we're not far off, we've just got the main spring to clean now. It's in a pretty bad state, is this, to be honest, this fork. And we'll just give that a bit of a clean off, just to make sure we've got the last of the stuff off. Now remember, on the reinstallation, it's the, the tight coils go to the top. That's really important. Okay, that's ready. Right, so we're pretty much ready for a rebuild now. Um, just make sure you clean everything, you know, and inspect it properly. And you're looking for, obviously, damage, cracks anything that's going to cause it not to do what it's supposed to do really, whatever the component is. There we go, that's good and clean. And we're going to be replacing the main seal, so don't need to bother with that. And of course we're replacing the top bush as well, so that can stay as it is. No need to clean that. Oakley Oakley, time for reassembly. So if you get the, uh, get the fork leg, Okay, so the first job is to install the stanchion. Now, ideally, if you're doing a full rebuild, you'd also replace this bottom bush. I haven't got one, so we're going to have to reuse that. But looking at the two bushes, this one isn't anywhere near as worn anyway. So hopefully, we're going to be okay. So we'll slide that down there. There we go. So that's now installed. So first of all, to go in, we've got the new bush. That's the part number for a TDR 250, Yamaha TDR 250, 1988, and that's for the top bush. 
Okay, now I don't think the bush is handed, so it doesn't need to go, well, it's not, you know, top or bottom, it just needs to go in, basically. So we'll slide that down there, and it won't drop straight in. You've got to sort of push it down, and, you know, you can use a punch just to, just to locate it if you want. Um, if you go anywhere near the fork stanchion, this part, then don't just slide along it rather than actually... Uh, hammer anything if you can help it because if you hammer it you're going to score it all right i'm just going to cheat a little bit and use the old bush just to help so that's the old bush going on top and i'll chuck the washer down there there we go and now i can just use a punch just to sort of cap the whole thing into place and notice that the hammer is sliding down the stanchion. I'm not doing that. I'm sliding the hammer down. And that helps or prevents any damage to the actual stanchion. And you just got to take your time and make sure you keep the end of the punch away from the actual chrome. Because if you put a dent on there, you're in big trouble. I think I might be all the way in there. Just one more go. Oh, it's a bit further yet. There we go. So you can hear the sounds changed. So we'll pop that out of there and we should get the washer and the old bush out. There we go. And now you can check the new bush is the new bush needs to be flush just down there with the top of that shoulder in the casting. I'm pretty sure we're about there. Yes, we are. I'll do you a close up. Okay, so once you've installed the bush, and the bush is that one just there, look, that goes between the, the leg, the aluminium of the leg and the stanchion make sure that it's flush with that shoulder it needs to be all the way down if it's not all the way down now you're gonna have problems later on getting the circlip in because everything's gonna be gonna be too high in this recess so make sure it's all the way down once it is we can now fit the main seal right so with the main seal then you need to put some grease on it and uh, just any old grease will do as well unless you don't use rubber grease Provided there's no sharp edges around the top, you can put the seal straight on. But a lot of the manuals will say to put some insulation tape around that top edge to protect this seal. So we'll do that just so that nobody tells me off for not doing it. Just chuck a bit of tape around there. It doesn't take a second. You know, it's about ages getting these seals all the way from England, so it's well worth just a few seconds to protect them. So we've now got the, uh, you've just seen, with the top bush is now in place. Next thing to go in is the steel washer. So just drop that down there. And next is the main hydraulic seal. And I've just put some grease on that, so that's all ready. And of course, we've got some tape around the top to protect the seal from the sharp edges of the end of the tube. So we'll stick that over there. Very, very carefully. Don't force it, otherwise you can very easily damage these seals and they're going to leak. And then, of course, we need some more grease actually on the stanchion itself. We don't want that seal to pick up, you know, on the way down. That would be bad. Can't go wrong with a bit of grease. And that grease will just end up under that, uh, under that seal. Doesn't matter. Plenty help. And then I'm going to use the old seal. Now this is one of the tricks. Run the old seal down there. And then we can use that to push the new seal into position. Now, try and use finger force as much as you can. You don't want to be hammering the hell out of stuff. You can buy special seal installation kits that have different sized tubes that you put down the side. And then you can give them a bit of a hammer and they'll, they'll drop into place. So you can use them a bit like a slide hammer to put them in. Um, they are really expensive. You can also use uh, like PVC pipe, you know, and just cut it so you can change the diameter of the pipe by cutting a notch out of it. 
that's also a really good way of doing it. Um, however, this is sort of how I do it, and uh, some people might go, ah. but don't worry, this seal at the top is the old seal. And again, we just slide the punch down. There we go. Just making sure that that seal is fully, fully in position, because if it's not, and it's not quite all the way down, we're not going to get the, we're not actually going to be able to get the circlet yeah, into its groove. But remember, always, always slide the hammer, if you're going to use a hammer, slide it down the stanchion. There we go. Okay, now we can get that old seal out just with a little flat screwdriver. It's not in tight, you know, it's just acting as a spacer to help you get it out, to, to install the new one. There we go. And next we've got the dust seal. Now, I was hoping that these would be new ones, but they're not. So we'll just flick the dust seal over there, and that pretty much does just push down into place. Lastly, uh, Ben did manage to buy some new springs, uh, some retaining sort of circlipy things. That's this one here, and again, that just drops down. Now, at this point in time, you should be able to see the circlip groove above the dust seal. If you can't, that's a sure sign that you haven't got everything far enough down. Uh, assuming it is, then you should be able to fit that, uh, that clip and it'll just click into place. That's it, done. No screwdrivers, no messing around, just straight in, nice and easy. Okay, so next step, we can remove the tape. Let's get rid of that, get rid of the cling, there we go, look. Excellent. Yeah, perfect. Right. Now, next step is we need to reinstall that bottom bolt. And before we do that, we need a damn good clean. And it should have a copper washer on it. And it turns out that neither of these two forks had that copper washer. Bloody miracle that they didn't leak any oil, to be honest. But as luck would have it, I have some. And these ones are pretty much the same size as the ones we use on the banjo fittings for the brakes on the bikes. So I'm going to use a couple of those because that's all I've got. But it does have to have them. Okay, so we've got that to fit. And it's time now to put the piston back down the tube. Cool. And it goes down the tube, this is the bottom, this is the top. Just before I go any further actually, can you see at the end of this tube there are some indents to take a, basically, a big bolt head. Uh, and that's there to stop this tube from turning whilst you do the bolt up, because that bolt fits in there, look. Yeah? So we have to, when we're tightening that up, we've got to have some way of holding this. Now, this is a homemade version of the Yamaha special tool and I'll even give you the special tool number Hang on a minute. because it's in here very clever right it's called a T well there's two parts to it one's a T handle which is 90890-01326 and there's an adapter that goes on the end called a holder which is a 90890-01328 as it turns out I made my own. Bit of steel, found an old bolt that I welded on that's got the right size head and chucked a bit of scrap steel across the top to make a T-bar. That cost me nothing. And you should have one of these. Or make your own. Doesn't take long. Okay, so we can now post this down the tube and we can bolt it into the bottom. Now that needs to have thread lock on it. Here we go. Right, a little bit of thread lock. Oh, God. A little bit, he says, way too much thread lock. Let's get rid of some of that. There we go. Okay, and that pops into there, goes through a hole about here, and then we'll join on and connect and thread into that piston tube that I've just shown you. There we go. Right, where's my ratchet? Okay, so with the T bar, I'm now holding that inner tube 
stationary. What am I doing with that? Makes it a lot easier. Don't need a rattle gun for this bit. There we go. Right. Now, there is a torque setting for this, and it's 30 Newton meters. Okay. So we've got the special tool. Andy's special tool number 36B. And that goes into there. And it's going to lock into that bolt head type thing. That, that's almost that socket that's built into that tube. That's now locked. We can stick the uh, torque wrench at this end, hold it still, and torque it up, hopefully, to 30 Newton meters. There we go. Done. Okay, so we'll back that off. And that's the, the end of our special tool. It's done its job. And get rid of that. And now, ideally, Inside there, this is now all oil tight. So what we can do now is put some oil in it. So I'm going to stick it in the vise, in the vertical position. There we go. And I'll show you how much oil to put in. Okay, so we've now I've now mounted the um, the fork back in the vise vertically. The, um, the main spring is not in. That's very important. It's critical to the measurements. And we're in a position now where we can put the right oil into the fork, the new oil. Now, the, uh, the oil that we're going to be using, of course, is Yamaha. And it's 10 weight fork oil. And you're going to also need, ideally, some method of, of measuring how much oil you're going to be putting in there. This is a really cheap measuring jug. It's, uh, it's in millilitres. And... Uh, well, it's about 10 bucks. It's cheap. And you need one of these if you're going to be doing forks a lot. Very important. So, the Yamaha spec. I'll have a quick look. The Yamaha spec. I'll put it on the screen for you as well. It's 394 centimeters cubed. Or 394 milliliters. Whichever one whichever you prefer. Okay. So I'm going to pour in 394 millilitres of oil into this measuring jug. Perfect. We'll just wait for all the bubbles to settle and that will give us an accurate reading. Now what you're also going to need for this task, just while that's settling, is, a mic is uh, some vernier calipers. And the secondary, the more accurate measurement that they give us, they tell us, Yamaha tell us to put 394 millilitres of oil down the tube. And then, the final check to make sure we're really accurate is to measure from the top of the tube, making sure it's all the way down, from the top of the tube, down to the level of oil inside the tube. And it should be 115 millimetres from the top, should the level of oil. So what I've done, quite sneakily, is use my verniers as my, to give me that 115 mil. So I've set 115 mil on the little pointy stick that sticks out the bottom, and then I can stick it down the tube, rest it on the side of the tube, pull it out, use it like a dipstick. If it's got oil on, there, if it's, obviously if it's right on the tip, we're perfect. If, it, if there's oil further up the dipstick, then we've got too much. And if there's no oil on the end, we need a bit more. That's the basic rule of thumb. And this really is you know, just as accurate as the tool that they use in the shop. All they have is a ring with a little clamp and a rod that sticks down. It does the same thing, you know? Okay. Yep, yeah, that'll work. 394. Right, I'm going to pour this in. Hopefully it's not going to end up on the floor. And you've got to do this slowly. Don't rush it because it's got to fill in all the voids. You can hear it gurgling around. This is quite a critical part. If you pour it in too fast, there's a chance it might overflow over the sides, and then you're going to have oil everywhere. Again. There we go, that'll do. Okay. Now, before we come to dip it with our special expensive dipstick, we're going to need to just basically move the fork stanchion up, and then back down. I'm just going to work that oil into all the, uh, the various orifices and make sure it's full, 
down the bottom. There's no trapped air anywhere because that's going to give you a false reading otherwise. So just you know, work it up and down three or four times. There we go. And then make sure you're all the way down. That's that's critical. If you don't, if you're not all the way down again. You're going to get a false reading. Right, wipe off your dipstick. This is set to 115 millimeters. I'll put the spec on the screen for you. And then I'm just going to run it down there, trying to keep it central, keep it vertical, until it touches the side of the fork stanchion. And then take it out. Have a look. No, we're dry. So we need a little tiny bit more. And the trick to this is not to put too much in, because it's a lot harder getting it out. And I have a syringe for getting it out. But if you just put a little bit in at a time, and just keep dipping it, you'll get to the point where you've got just the right amount. <coughs> now, I don't really know why it's not perfectly bang on when it's 394. Ah, there we go, look. Okay, so I've gone over by about 5 mil. So I've got to take a little bit out. That's all right, because I happen to have Mr. Syringe. We can stick that in there, and I can just pull out a little bit. There we go, that should probably be about right. Okay. And we'll just dip it again. Now, if you have too much oil in the forks, then what's going to happen is you're going to get a hydraulic lock before the fork has its full travel of compression. And that is really bad. Let's just put a bit more back in there. there we go. That's really, really bad. It can cause you know, the bike to, to have accidents and all sorts. You know, very strange handling. That'll do. We're one mil in. Happy with that? Great stuff. Okay, so now we've got the correct amount of oil and the right weight of oil in the fork. Basically, we're about done. So all we need to do now is extend the fork, pull the stanchion out for the last time, and then we can pop the spring back in. Now remember, it's the large coils to the top. So I'll drop that in there. And again, do it slowly, don't splash oil everywhere. Okay, I get rid of those hairy bits. And next we have a washer to go on top of the spring, and then we have the top cap. Now, these top caps, the, the, oh, these forks themselves are adjustable, and basically we can wind that thread down into the fork, and that's going to increase basically the preload. It's going to squash the spring a bit, a bit more. And it's going to get, you know, basically push the front of the bike up a little bit higher uh, and make the suspension a bit stiffer. And also, these are air forks. So we can also put some air inside the fork, just a few psi. There'll be some specs somewhere, I'll put them on the, on the video for you. And that compressed air also aids the forks. Now, I very much doubt Ben had any air in these forks. When I took them apart, there was no escaping gas which uh, probably means that, you know, it's been a bit of an issue. Um, but these have been adjusted right down to full, full strength, so to speak. Okay, so now the spring's in. I'm just going to move the whole thing down in the vise. There we go. And I'm going to clamp the fork. I'm going to clamp the fork on the actual stanchion itself. Okay, so we're very, very near finished now. Just going to put the washer on, and you can see that that's the mark where that runs against. So that's up. Stick that on there. And what else do we need? Well, we need a socket. So let's get the ratchet. And we'll get a socket that fits on there. There we go. Put it on there. Yes, it's in do-up mode. Stick that on, and now we've got to push down to compress the spring far enough to get those threads to start. There we go. Well, he says, probably jammed up there. Okay. 
There we go. Excellent. Now, I can't do these up to full tightness because to do that, I'll do it when they're in the in the triple clamps. But I will put you a torque setting on the screen about now for the tightening torque of these top caps. Okay, well, it looks to me like that's the second fork all finished. And I've shown you how to strip these forks down. And this, this particular design of fork is it's pretty old. These are 90, this is a 1988 bike, don't forget. But the reason why I chose these to do a video is they sort of represent the majority of forks out there on most budget non-competition motorcycles. Not too complicated inside. Uh, not double chamber forks like you get on the WR450 and the YZs and all the race bikes and stuff and the, and the, the R1s and that kind of thing in the world. But this is the standard sort of fork, with standard fork seal, standard internals, you know, and, and the procedure to strip it down is pretty much the same for all of them. That's why I did your video, because it sort of applies to lots and lots of bikes out there. Um, so there you go. What did we learn from it? Well... Use the right weight fork oil. If you find that your forks are a little bit spongy still, then change up to the next thickness. That's, so if you've got a 10, go up to a 12.5 or a 15 weight. If you find your suspension's a bit heavy, a bit hard, then drop your fork oil down you know, to the next, the next weight. So if you're at 10, go down to 7.5 or maybe you're a 5. Um, it depends a lot on your body weight. If you're a light, a light lad or a light lass, then you want lighter fork oil in your forks. And if you're a heavier chap like me, um, then of course you want slightly heavier because when you brake there's a lot more weight transfer on the front and the forks compress too much. Um, be careful. Take your time. Don't damage the chrome. And, and if the chrome's pitted and corroded, then you've just found the reason why your fork seals failed. And there is absolutely no point in putting new fork seals into forks that have got damaged stanchions. just isn't going to work. They ain't going to last, they're going to fail very, very quickly, and then you're going to risk getting fork oil on your brakes again, and then you're going to have no brakes, and then you're going to crash and die, and it's going to catch fire and be a real problem for everybody else on the road. So, um, you know, uh, do it properly. Um, there probably are companies around that will resurface uh, and re chrome your stanchions if you can't buy new ones, um, second hand ones. Uh, maybe if you can find some good ones, um, but you never quite know whether they've been bent in the past, you know, and then straightened again in the press. So be really, really careful buying second hand uh, stanchions. Okay, there you go, job done. My name is Andy Young, I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And uh, well, if you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them down the bottom, and I'll do very, my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it'd be great to have you on board. I think as of this morning, I was at 252 subscribers. Woohoo! Dead chuff for that. Um, if you do want to subscribe, then also click the little gear next to the subscribe button and turn on notifications. And that way you're going to get an email come through whenever I upload any new videos. If I haven't got a video on my channel of something that you really desperately need, then, uh, you know, Flick me a comment, let me know. It might be something that I've got in the pipeline that I can bring forward a bit and get the video up there a bit sooner to try and help you out. Okay, crew, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Over and out.